My MOOF University YouTube videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. If you'd like to pay for the use of the videos, visit my website at moofuniversity.com, click on the pay-what-you-like link at the top of the page, and follow the instructions on that page. Thank you, and enjoy. So in this video, I want to talk about fatty acid synthesis. Before, when we, when we talked about fatty acid metabolism, we specifically talked about fatty acid degradation, which was called beta-oxidation. And that was when we took a fatty acid, we activated it to an acyl-CoA, and then we broke down this acyl-CoA via a process called beta-oxidation to get a bunch of acetyl-CoAs, which were then used uh, in the TCA cycle to give us a bunch of NADHs and FADH2s um, for energy. So this process, of course, was uh, we were breaking fatty acids down. So that was a catabolic process. And of course, it was called beta-oxidation. Catabolic process are oxidative pathways. And that's, of course, if you recall, arco oxid uh, anabolic reactions are reductive, catabolic reactions are oxidative. Um, and I wrote here sometimes propanyl-CoA2, um, that's just indicating that sometimes if we broke down odd-numbered fatty acids, we'd get that three carbon molecule as well. Um, anyway, where did this reaction, or this uh, pathway rather, occur? It occurred in the mitochondrial matrix. So mito matrix. Now what we're going to talk about is something pretty much the opposite, which is fatty acid synthesis. So before we broke them down, now we're going to be making them. Now it's not actually called beta oxidate or beta reduction, but I like to call it beta reduction because that's pretty much what it is. In beta oxidation, we oxidize the beta carbon of the molecule. Um, in fatty acid synthesis, we're going to do just the opposite. We're going to reduce the beta carbon. And this process, right, we're going to be, instead of um, taking a fatty acid and breaking it up into a bunch of acetyl-CoAs, which are just the two carbon molecules, what we're going to do is we're going to take a bunch of these two carbon molecules, link them together to make a fatty acid. And that will be catalyzed by a certain enzyme complex called fatty acid synthase, cleverly named, right? Anyway, um, this process, of course, we're building a molecule, so it is anabolic. And if it's anabolic, according to ARCO, it's going to be reductive. So that means it's going to require reducing agents. Of course, beta oxidation required oxidizing agents, these FADs, NAD pluses, that were turned into FADH2s and NADHs, respectively. So what's going to be, what are going to be the reducing agents in fatty acid synthesis? Are they going to be FADH2 and NADH? Nope. Not those guys. Those are not used. Instead, what's used, you might already know this, is NADPH. This molecule, we've seen it before, and I'll get to that in just a second, but this molecule is a reducing agent uh, that can be uh, oxidized to NADP+, and that's actually what happens in this process. We'll see more of the details later. But this molecule is used in our cells for reductive biosynthesis. So it's really used for reactions that build, right? Uh, which are anabolic, and um, that bio, those biosynthetic pathways require a reducing agent, NADPH is that reducing agent, and that's what we're going to see in fatty acid synthesis. Now, the fatty acid that we're going to be making specifically, that we're going to show the steps for, is palmitate, which is the um, conjugate base of palmitic acid, and this is a 16 carbon saturated fatty acid. And uh, the reason why we're going to do that is because it's commonly made, and it actually, once it's made, uh, it's cleaved off of this, this fatty acid synthase complex and gives rise to other fatty acids. Now, this process, of course, like we said, is reductive and requires NADPH. Now, where do we get these NADPHs? Well, where have we seen it before? Where we have seen it before is in the pentose phosphate pathway. It's a product of the glycerol, or excuse me, the glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase uh, enzyme reaction. So that pentose phosphate pathway creates NADPHs, and they're actually used to build these fatty acids. Uh, another source, because there are two different ways to get this NADPH to use for this, is uh, acetyl CoA transport. We'll talk a little bit about that later. So acetyl CoA transport. Now, where does this process occur? Uh, this process, well, maybe a little hint here might help, is that if the pentose phosphate pathway makes these NADPHs, and these NADPHs are used 
in this process, then maybe where the pentose phosphate pathway happens, that might be where fatty acid synthesis occurs. And that actually is the case. The pentose phosphate pathway occurs in the cytosol, and fatty acid synthesis occurs in the cytosol. Okay, cool. Now, fatty acid synthesis occurs in three stages. So, what we have to think about is that we're linking a bunch of these acetyl-CoA's together to make a fatty acid, right? Where do these acetyl-CoA's come from? Well, where is acetyl-CoA normally made? It's made in the mitochondria. So, that's a little bit of an issue because fatty acid synthesis occurs in the cytosol. So one of the first things we have to do is take the acetyl-CoA's from the mitochondrial matrix and transport them across into the cytosol. So that stage or that process, uh, I, I call it acetyl-CoA transport. Okay, cool. So that's, that's one thing. Now we, at least we got these acetyl-CoA's in the cytosol. Once the acetyl-CoA's are in the cytosol, what we need to do is there's this, there's this activation step. So we have to t activate these acetyl-CoA's to malonyl-CoA, and that of course occurs in the cytosol. And this malonyl CoA, we'll talk a little bit more about it later, but this is the the molecule that is committed to fatty acid synthesis. And it'll actually be the, the two carbon donor. Um, and we'll we'll talk more about that later. But once we have these malonyl CoAs, we're gonna have to actually link them together to make the fatty acid. So which brings me to the third stage. So the third stage is essentially running the reactions that are opposite beta oxidation. So again, I like to think of it as beta reduction, although I don't think it's actually called that, like I said before. Um, if you recall, beta oxidation, we'd start off with an ASO-CoA. We'd have four steps, the first one being the first oxidation, then a hydration step in which we'd add water, and then the, th the third step was a second oxidation, and the fourth step was a cleavage. We'd cut off an acetyl-CoA. Now, fatty acid synthesis is also four steps, and those four steps kind of counteract and are pretty much opposite beta oxidation. So, notice though I've written this one to four down this way, and this one I've written one to four up this way. So, the first step of fatty acid synthesis is a condensation reaction, which is a um, reaction that links um, two, two carbon molecules together, or excuse me, two carbon atoms together. So, forming a carbon-carbon bond is what condensation is, which is pretty much the opposite of cleavage, right? Cleavage is cutting that carbon-carbon bond. So after that condensation reaction, there's the first reduction, which is going to be opposite the second oxidation from beta oxidation. And in the third step, there's a dehydration, which is opposite the hydration step of beta oxidation. And in fatty, the final step in fatty acid synthesis is the second reduction, which is opposite the first oxidation in beta oxidation. So once, this, once these four reactions have occurred, we've basically attached a two-carbon unit. So this process can happen again, adding two carbons at a time to eventually create uh, a fatty acid. In our case, of course, like I mentioned before, is going to be palmitate. So I hope that video was helpful in introducing the topic, and uh, thank you for watching.